and this is Kimberly Ho, who is executive producer. I've been trying to ask her for a drink for three years, and she turns me down every single time. So how, my, what are my chances tonight? Very high. It's our 10th anniversary, Frederick. We've grown a great deal since we first had our inaugural event in Phoenix, Arizona, ever since we've been in New York City, and we're having a fantastic time. Very excited about Nelson DeMille being our Thriller Master tonight. And I can see by the mob, again, it's been a, a great success, right? Every year we tend to beat our attendance record, and we hope to continue doing so. And we're very pleased this year that we're going to be having people from France and from Denmark, you know, Saudi Arabia, all over the world, more and more countries. Are you a private eye yourself, or where are you? Uh, no, what do you I'm, do? I'm a college professor. For 20 years, I was also a forensic psychologist before I retired in 2002. So. Is that uh, the way you think you can penetrate the mind of killers and uh, get to the other side of the people you study? It certainly has helped. Are you a CIA agent or ex-CIA agent or will be CIA agent? I'm a former stealth bomber pilot and I've worked with most of the special ops agencies and CIA. How many people are nominated in that uh, original I mean, paperback? There are five of us uh, nominated in this category, yes. And your book is obviously the best, right? Of course it is, yes. So how many nominations uh, have you had so far? Is it your first one? To be the first. Okay, how is it feeling? Pretty uh, incredible. I'm just happy to be here. I kind of don't expect to win, so I, I'm just like gonna have a great time and hang out with cool people. Who was going to introduce you, correct? Yes, yeah, Scott was uh, Thrill Master last year, so he passes it. But he said to me earlier he wants to hold on to it for another year, so he might not pass it. Uh, well, so you must not be good friends, right? <laughs> you still feel like you have something to, to prove? Well, not so much to prove, but I still have stories left that I want to tell. Some of them are things that I've been thinking about for years. Uh, I want to get a little bit out of the genre that I'm in now and do some, go again, get back to some more serious stuff. I need to reinvent myself and to get myself rejuvenated. So we're talking about philosophy, more self-reflective, contemplative novels? Well, maybe not so much that, but maybe more, more male, female, which was a little bit what Gold Coast was about. Uh, you know, people, more character-driven novels as opposed to you know, plot-driven novels. And I think at my age, as I'm slowing down a little bit, uh, I'm more contemplative, so yeah, this is probably, probably what I should be doing at this age. What makes a good young adult novel? Relationship? Uh, I think it's... Yeah, is it girl? Uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> I think it needs to be a combination of everything, you know, a good plot, a good character, a good character development. I think that you need all of that to make a good young adult novel, to make a good any novel. Is that, well, I'm, 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 I have to move the mic, so oh, you have to if, move the mic. Right. you have to wait for me to go. Right. If you talk before, we're not going to hear you. Okay, well, it's a cocktail party. This is rehearsal. Okay. What is it like for you to come back here? You know, it's Thriller Fest, it's International Thriller Writers, it's New York City, the best city in the world. Um, this is the ground zero of uh, literary happenings. I couldn't be prouder. The process of writing, you seem to be pretty prolific, so you do a book a year, two books a year? Actually, it's more like three or four. Um, I publish both with New York City publishers as well as self-published, and so my fans really expect me to be putting books out fairly regularly. How does it feel to be nominated on your first novel? I was not expecting it at all. I'm kind of shell-shocked. Uh, what was the crossover for you to decide to write a novel? Well, I lost my job as a software developer, and I'd always loved to write, and I decided to take that time to write a novel. Are you buying the drinks tonight? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not joking. Am I laughing? <laughs> How many novels are we talking about? Do you have a five in competition? Is it all yours? Or you just have one? I just have one up this year. <laughs> oh, pathetic of you. <laughs> yeah, Tim Williams. As Tim Williams, you look like a Tim Williams to me. I feel like a Tim Williams most days. You've been told before. I have. Are you afraid of novels? Or you I'm, want... I'm scared to death of novels. So your name is Liliana Hart? Liliana Hart. And uh, you're not nominated? But, no. But they want me to talk to you. Okay. What shall we talk about? What, uh, what do they want me to talk to you about? I have no idea. I asked them that. <laughs> so I remember you, you won last year for the best uh, novel, the That's best right. original novel, yeah. Andrew Piper. Yeah. So um, a year later, uh, what happened to you? Well, I was able to say for the last year that I won this prize, at, you know, the International Thriller Writers Award, which um, came as a great surprise to me that night one year ago uh, and continues to feel like a surprise now. But uh, it, it's been a great, a great assistance in, in sort of introducing my book to people who hadn't uh, heard of me up until that point. 
in fact, I was elated. It gave me a sense of confidence. You know, a lot of the time, those those demons that uh, you know plague us of insecurity. Uh, if you win a big prize, it makes them go away for a while. So I, I found it uh, uh, completely a benefit in, in every respect. No, no, no my know. dad's a great guy. Shout out to my dad wherever you are, Pop. I keep thinking every book is going to be easier and every book is just as hard as the one before it. Good evening. I'm Kathleen Antrim. Welcome to the 10th anniversary of Thriller Fest and the 10th annual Thriller Awards Banquet. ITW has made incredible strides since its creation 11 years ago, not the least of which is Thriller Fest, which has provided our members with many educational and networking opportunities. We have an incredible group of sponsors whose participation enables ITW to make Thriller Fest the wonderful event that it is today. We would like to thank each and every one of them. And I've noted in the past that a little enthusiasm and competition happens from time to time, and I want to tell you to let, let go and have a good time with this. Writer's House Literary Agency. Tor Forge. Grand Central Publishing. St. Martin's Minotaur. Harper Collins, St. Martin's Press, Kensington Publishing, Brilliance Audio, Ocean View Publishing, Romantic Times Book Reviews, Wattpad, Kindle Direct Publishing. Circle of Seven Productions. Suspense Magazine. <laughs> Books Du Jour. Bookcase TV. Book Trib. The Writer. Book Country, Barnes and Noble. Didn't they do a great job today or this week in the book room? Just a phenomenal job. Nook Press and 511 Tactical. Let's just give them one rousing round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Fest has grown exponentially over the past 10 years. We include over 300 authors in our programming. In addition to the four tracks at our Writing School Craft Fest, we've also introduced a one-day intensive study called Master Craft Fest. And this year we added a business-focused track called Career Fest. We also host spotlight interviews, panels, and workshops and take time to socialize and network during our famous cocktail parties, luncheons, and coffee breaks. Of course, one of the highlights of the conference is the debut author breakfast. During these five busy days, we'll host over 1,000 people with a record-breaking registration again this year. And we truly, truly appreciate all of your support. It takes a year to coordinate the countless moving pieces and manage all the details to organize this wonderful conference. And quite frankly, this event would not happen without our talented executioners. I'm going to ask our executioners to stand as I call out their names. I know they just love this, but we're gonna do it anyway. And I'm gonna ask you all to hold your applause until we have everyone standing. MJ Rose, President. Lee Child, President. Linda Fairstein, Director at Large. R. L. Stein, Director at Large. D. P. Lyle, MD, Vice President of Education, Member Services, and our Craft Fest Director. Jenny Milchman, Vice President, Author Programming. 
Janice Gable Bashman, Vice President, Technology. Steve Berry, Vice President, Publications. Carla Buckley, Vice President, Awards. Peter James, International Vice President. D.L. Wilson, Vice President, Special Projects. Sandra Brannan, our Pitch Fest Director. John Land, our Marketing Director. Amy Christine Parker, Debut Author, Program Chair. Wendy Tyson, our Membership Coordinator for the Debut Author Program. Brian Robinson, Debut Forum Coordinator. Mark Leggett, Debut Program Technical Coordinator. Ed Amar, Debut Program Social Media. <laughs> Marjorie Brody, Debut Program Social Media. Kathy Perkins, Debut Program Social Media. Joshua Corrin, Awards Committee Chair. Suzanne Rojas, Awards Coordinator. Jennifer Crusher, Awards Coordinator and Volunteer Coordinator. Lynn Constantine, Volunteer Coordinator. Valerie Constantine, Volunteer Coordinator. Walt Gregg, Volunteer Coordinator. Tom Colgan, Program and Signage Editor. Julie Kramer, our Promotional Flyer Coordinator. Barry Lancet, Managing Editor, The Big Thrill. Anthony Franz, Managing Editor, The Big Thrill. Todd Gerber, Advertising Coordinator, The Big Thrill. J.H. Borgran, Thriller Roundtable Coordinator. Karen Dion, our Website Chair. Chris Graham, our Award Show Production and Art Director. Elizabeth Berry, our ITW Executive Director. Jessica Johns, Assistant to the Executive Director. Dennis Kennett, Thriller Fest Registrar. Terry Rogers, Volunteer Chair and Associate Registrar. Jillian Stein, Social Media Director. And Taylor Antrim, our Banquet Producer. Now let's give them all a round of applause. There is one incredible woman who we want to thank in a very special way. Quite frankly, words cannot describe the enthusiasm and perseverance and hard work and quite frankly, blood, sweat and tears that she puts into this job. And she works tirelessly to make sure that this, all of these events are memorable for all of us. Kimberly Howe, Executive Director of Thriller Fest, please join me on stage. Don't you leave. Oh, 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 come right back here, Kimberly. Turn around. Kim, 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 turn around. Come back. Not done singing your praises. Thriller Fest is absolutely huge, and it requires a tremendous, tremendous amount of dedication and hard work. It is ITW's biggest event, and under Kimberly's leadership, it has grown by leaps and bounds. Please join me once again in thanking her for all the hard work she has done, and we'd like to give her this token of our appreciation. I'm sure many of you have seen our spotlight authors this year. They've been uh, giving fantastic presentations. And I'd like to have you join me in thanking them for their outstanding contribution in making our 10th anniversary for Thriller Fest so very special. Mark Billingham, Greg Isles, and Charlene Harris. ITW continues to be a cutting edge organization. Our philosophy is to innovate, never imitate. 
we've been very fortunate to achieve that goal over the past 11 years. There is a very special group of people who work tirelessly behind the scenes to help ITW become this innovative organization. They are our board of directors. Again, I want to have them stand. I'm going to go ahead and obviously read off their names, and then let's hold our applause till the end. Co-presidents Lee Child and MJ Rose. Linda Fairstein, Director at Large. R.L. Stein, Director at Large. Steve Berry, Vice President, Publications. Carla Buckley, Vice President, Awards. Janice Gable-Bashman, Vice President, Technology. Peter James, our International Vice President. D.P. Lyle, our Vice President of Education and Member Services. Jenny Milchman, our Vice President of Author Programs. D.L. Wilson, Vice President, Special Projects. David Dunn, our Treasurer. And I'm going to add two other people to this list. These are the two people who none of us would be here today if it weren't for them, our co-founders, David Morrell and Gail Linz. Let's give them a round of applause. Now on to the awards portion of our show. I hope everyone enjoyed dinner. To begin the program for our 10th anniversary celebration, our good friends Daniel Palmer and Brad Parks have created a song to help commemorate this special event. Please welcome Daniel and Brad.
Wow, I'm so glad I don't have to follow that act. <laughs> that was great. Thanks, you guys. Next, I want to bring to the podium two people who have generously donated so much time and energy to ITW. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage co-presidents Lee Child and MJ Rose. We have to follow that. <laughs> they didn't tell us that. Anyway, welcome to the 10th Thriller Fest, or Thriller Fest X, as we apparently call it, like the NFL, like the Super Bowl. I remember a Super Bowl many years ago where the halftime show was sponsored by Pepsi, and it featured Britney Spears, which was obviously a disaster musically, but it was a lot of fun for anybody interested in language, because as you all readily appreciate the only anagram of Pepsi-Cola in the English language is Episcopal. And simultaneously, the only anagram of Britney Spears is Presbyterians. And unfortunately, our anagrams aren't as good. Thriller Fest could be Let's Err Filth. Lee Child could be Iced Hell. Or better still, Idle Lech. <laughs> Which kind of works because about the only anagram of MJ Rose is Saw MJ. <laughs> but whatever. This is our biggest, and hopefully you'll agree, our best ever Thriller Fest. It's been a wonderful 10 years since our first 106 degree conference in Phoenix, Arizona, back in 2006. And as they say, we were hot then, but we're hotter now. And for that, we have every single ITW member to thank. So this year was another year without membership dues because of our Wonder Publications Chair, Steve Berry, and all the authors here have contributed to our first ever New York Times bestseller, Face Off. And continued thanks to all the authors who contributed to all our past publications that still bring in income. Financially, we're in really good shape. And we're spending the money wisely. Now, last year, we commissioned the first ever codex study done for authors directly. Peter Hildick Smith and his team were charged with helping us to find out what makes a reader pick up a book by a new-to-them author. Our goal was to help each and every one of you sell more books. It was expensive, but it's the kind of thing we think a writer's organization should do. It's a game changer, and it's already being talked about in publishers' boardrooms and industry events like the London Book Fair and BEA. If you didn't get a copy of the survey, let the office know, because you really do need to read it. We're planning our next publication right now, a kind of sequel to Face Off, but featuring men and women characters working together, written by male and female pairs of authors. We won't be able to feature every author in the organization, but we can and do in The Big Thrill, the only e-magazine for thriller readers. Thanks to Janice and her crazy, wonderful staff, we put out an issue a month. It's a great magazine now, and we're up to over 26,000 subscribers, partly because of an amazing 1,000 Thriller Week giveaway in the fall, with a record 900 of you contributing. It was a win-win. Not only did we boost subscriptions, but our marketing efforts gave those 900 authors visibility, attention, which is still out there for the next 900 because of the circulation increase. We are saying we and our a lot, which makes me feel like a total fraud because I don't do anything. MJ does a lot, but even she would agree most of the work is done by our amazing volunteers. And we're sad to be losing one this year David Wilson is term limited and is stepping down after years of great work for us. I want to invite him to the stage for a small token of our esteem. You get a shake and you get a hug. <laughs> but even David would agree, the crucial role at ITW is played by our incredible executive director, Liz Berry, the heart and soul of this organization. So we invite Liz to the stage also for a small token of our appreciation and for a well-deserved round of applause.
And that's all we substantive we've got to say. We hope you've had a great time. Safe travels for tomorrow. And all that remains is to point out that the thriller title, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, is an anagram of huge water tail stuns and had you tense. And Raiders of the Lost Ark is an anagram of Ford, the real star is okay. And of course, to be or not to be, that is the question, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, is an anagram of, in one of the bard's best thought of tragedies, our insistent hero Hamlet queries on two fronts about how life turns rotten. And Clint Eastwood is Old West action, and Statue of Liberty is built to stay free, and Western Union is no wire unsent, and Justin Timberlake is, I'm a jerk, but listen. And on a personal note, Tom Cruise is, so I'm cuter. <laughs> and Church of Scientology is, rich, chosen, goofy cult. Good night. Good night. Now on to the awards. This first award is near and dear to all of our hearts here at ITW. It is the Silver Bullet Award, and it's given for outstanding philanthropic work. We are honored to have best-selling author and the 2014 Silver Bullet recipient, Brenda Novak, for the presentation of this honor to our 2015 recipient. Brenda. Many of you know that Kathy Reichs, like her fabulous character, um, Temperance Brennan, is a forensic anthropologist, and she uses her vast knowledge and experience to enrich her, her uh, work, whether it be her books or her TV show. Um, and but so you may not know about all of the many wonderful things she does to help out whenever and wherever there is a need. Dr. Reichs has traveled to Rwanda to testify at the UN Tribunal on Genocide and helped exhume a mass grave in Guatemala. As part of her work at the Joint Prisoners of War Missing in Action Accounting Command, she aided in the identification of war dead from World War II, Korea, and Southeast Asia. She also assisted with identifying remains found at Grand, Ground Zero at the World Trade Center following the 9-11 terrorist attack. More recently, Dr. Reich served as the leading forensic anthropologist for the defense in the Casey Anthony trial. In 2010, Kathy was one of five thriller writers to participate in the USO Operation Thriller and traveled to Afghanistan to meet troops deployed there. She also supports five children through World Vision, as well as a whole host of other charities from Animals Asia Foundation, to the American Heart Association, to Foundation for Tomorrow. She's a credit to any organization she belongs to, and it is a great honor to me to be able to introduce this year's Silver Bullet Award winner, Dr. Kathy Likes. Thank you for that. Great introduction. I'm really looking forward to what I have to say. <laughs> I've always believed that thank you speeches should be like shooting stars. They should be dazzling and exciting and over before you know it. So I just want to say that there are so many members of this organization that do so much for so many, whether it's promoting literacy among children or helping beginning authors or organizing tours to say thanks to our troops that I am truly honored and flattered to be given this award. I read somewhere that any acceptance or thank you speech should include a little bit of advice. But I also remember the little girl who on the exam question about who is Socrates said, Socrates was a wise man who gave a lot of advice and then they poisoned him. So I'm just going to say thank you, thank you. I am humbled and honored. Thank you. 
Now the moment we've all been waiting for, the 2015 Thriller Awards. It's my pleasure to bring to the stage our Vice President of Awards, Carla Buckley. Good evening. I'm delighted to see you all here tonight and um, truly thrilled to tell you what a wonderful year we've had. And the first thing I'd like to do is remove this and say that we wouldn't have had the successful Thriller Award competition that we've had if it weren't for our 30 award, I mean, I'm sorry, our 30 judges who worked tirelessly behind the scenes to read every submission and debate, argue impassionedly to come up with our finalists and our winners. Their names are listed in your program, and if you have a moment at some point, maybe you could read them and give them a silent cheer. And there are a couple of other people who also worked behind the scenes along with them. Our two coordinators, Suzanne Roarhouse and Jen Kreischer. Jen Kreischer is here tonight, and I'd like to present her a small token from ITW board to thank her for her commitment. And also my BFF, Josh Corin, who has worked with me both on the debut chair program and for the past three years. Josh, it's about time we officially thanked you. And we have a little token. I hope it fits in your suitcase. And now the moment that you all really have been waiting for, our Thriller Awards. Presenting the award for best ebook original is Josh Corn. And the nominees for best ebook original novel are Post by Sean Black, Sean Black Ditto, The Metaxi Project by Leighton Green, Sixth Street Press, Wannabes by Michael Logan, Publisher, Michael Logan. Hard Fall by C.J. Lyons, publisher, Legacy Books. And 13 Hollywood Apes by Gil Revel, publisher, Alibi. And the winner is in this envelope. C.J. Lyons for Hard Fall. Well, do you guys know how when you finish a book, you say, oh my god, that book nearly killed me? And your spouse or editor kind of rolls their eyes and go, oh my god, authors are so neurotic. <laughs> This book actually almost did kill me. Um, as a pediatric ER doctor, it was part of my job to give a voice to the victims. And as a thriller writer, it is such a blessing to be able to do that. And I want to thank you guys for helping me to fulfill that dream and to give a voice to the victims through my writing. It's truly, truly appreciated. Thank you. Presenting the award for young adult novel, the best one, is Kelly Armstrong. And the nominees for best young adult novel are Nearly Gone by L. Cosmono, Kathy Dawson Books, Tabula Rasa by Kristen Lippert Martin, Egmont, USA, The Eighth Guardian by Meredith McArdle, Skyscape, The Unbound by Victoria Schwab, Disney Hyperion, and Wicked Little Secrets by Kara Taylor, St. Martin's Griffin. And the winner is, once I open the envelope, they've got these really well sealed. The winner for Best Young Adult Novel is El Cosimino for Nearly Gone.
prepared. Um, the fellow nominees in my category have the most wonderful books, and I'm so glad to be here to celebrate with all of you. Um, I'd like to say a quick thank you for two very special people who couldn't be here this evening. Um, my editor, Kathy Dawson, at Kathy Dawson and Penguin Books for Young Readers. And um, my agent, Sarah Davis, who um, pulled nearly Boswell from her slush pile and um, brought this debut into the world. I'm very, very grateful. And for two special guests with me tonight who came out to support, my critique partners, Megan Miranda and Ashley Elston. Couldn't be here without you. And I wanted to thank the ITW for um, helping us to celebrate the importance of young adult and children's literature. Thank you so much. Okay, next year I won't seal the envelopes quite so tightly. I was just going through airport security and, you know, it got a little jittery. Presenting the award for best short story is Hilary Davidson. And the nominees for best short story are Richard Helms for Busting Redheads in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, Stephen Ross for Pussycat, Pussycat in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, Gigi Vernon for Showstopper in Mystery Writers of America Presents Ice Cold, Tales of Intrigue from the Cold War, published by Grand Central, and Bev Vincent, The Honey Trap, also published in Mystery Writers of America Presents Ice Cold, Tales of Intrigue from the Cold War, and Tim L. Williams, The Last Wrestling Bear in West Kentucky, from Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. And the winner is, no one would let me bring a sharp object up on stairs, so I can do this myself. And the winner is Tim L. Williams for The Last Wrestling Bear in West Kentucky.
Chip McGregor, my publisher. Um, I want to thank, or rather, Chip McGregor, my agent, I should say. And my publisher is Thomas and Mercer for believing in the moonlights. Um, down and up. Uh, down and up books. Eric, thank you. Um, Polis, thank you. Um, you know, it's been a long road, and ITW has been a lot to me. This is the greatest place in the world to publish. This is the uh, this is the groundswell of uh, literary uh, ups and downs, and I just want to thank everybody. Thanks again. Presenting the award for best first novel is Stephanie Pintoff. The nominees for best first novel are The Absence Jazz by Ray Celestin, publisher Mantle. Invisible City by Julia Dahl, publisher Minotaur Books. The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins, publisher Seven Street Books. The Weight of Blood by Laura McHugh, publisher Siegel and Brown. The Martian by Andy Weir, publisher Crown. And the winner is... Very well sealed. Laura McHugh for the way of life.
His books have been translated into more than 25 languages. He's sold more than 30 million copies worldwide. And they've been adapted into both feature-length film and two television miniseries. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our 2014 Thriller Master, Scott Jerome. Uh, good evening all. Um, we are here tonight uh, to see the Thriller Master Award presented to one of America's preeminent writers of suspense, uh, Nelson DeMille. Uh, in his 18 novels, Nelson has captivated readers, critics, and as tonight's award testifies, his peers. Um, if I was a super controlling person, Nelson, I would tell you how you ought to feel about this. Uh, instead, uh, I'll be egocentric and tell you how I felt about this. Um, and I think this is a special award, at least it was for me, for two reasons. Uh, one is because of the organization that gives it. Uh, the ITW has managed to be far more than a collection of successful authors who enjoy rubbing elbows with one another. Uh, and it distinguishes itself by being truly an author's organization that is for authors in all stages of their careers and that offers real teaching, uh, real career guidance, uh, and real help uh, to authors. And authors need to stick together and the ITW is one of the best examples of what that means. Um, the other reason is something I alluded to before, because this is an award given by your peers, uh, people who sit there every day, uh, who sweat and figuratively bleed uh, over getting the word on the page, connecting thought and feelings with words, uh, and that, I've always figured, is one of the supreme honors that people who do the same thing uh, want to honor you. Uh, I was interested yesterday, the uh, newly nominated chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff named, was asked as he was testifying uh, before Congress yesterday what the number one national security threat was, and he flummoxed the White House by saying Russia. And uh, it was interesting to me because it sounded uh, like he had read uh, Nelson's latest novel, Radiant Angel, uh, and which, like many of its predecessors, uh, debuted as number one on the New York Times list and also the USA Today list. Um, and Nelson's books have exhibited that kind of uh, consistent prescience uh, about especially the nature of the terrorist threats that this country has faced and continued to face. Uh, Whatever the book, uh, a couple of biographical motifs of Nelson's uh, distinguish themselves. One is his experience uh, as a first lieutenant in Vietnam, which uh, very often weaves its way into Nelson's storytelling, and uh, we appreciate him for not allowing that experience, uh, not so well understood at the time from the perspective of our soldiers, to be uh, remembered today and in, through clearer eyes. And the other, of course, is Nelson's continuing attachment to various sites in Long Island uh, where he's long lived. Uh, and the sense of place that often arises in Nelson's work is one of many, many things uh, that distinguishes it. For all of those reasons and many others, uh, it's my great privilege to present uh, the 2015 Thriller Master Award to Nelson DeMille. Thank you very much, Scott. That was really, really, really generous of you. 
And um, I want to thank you all for that very warm welcome. I'm looking for my glasses. And I want to thank uh, a number of people tonight. I'm not going to go on and on. I want to thank my table for being my table and uh, for sharing the wine. Uh, first of all, I want to thank my wife. I want to stand. Who's been so supportive? Please stand in the middle. I was on a publicity tour in Denver and uh, got off the plane looking for my media escort. There was this good-looking blonde holding my, my book up. Um, and uh, she goes, let me tell the story. But now, that was Sandy DeMille, Sandy something else in those days, and now we're married. So, she's, uh, I told her not to marry an author, but she did listen. Um, and also, what I want to uh, congratulate all the nominees and uh, congratulate the winners. You guys, uh, you should be proud of what you've done tonight and uh, I congratulate all of you. So. I also want to say thanks to uh, Lee Child, my good friend, and MJ Rose from the Board of International Thrill Writers uh, for inviting me to be the Thrill Master for uh, 2016. Um, Lee and I kind of hang around with a group. We call ourselves the Round Table. Uh, we do feel like we're around the Round Table, and uh, what we do, we don't talk literature. We sit around and bitch about everything that that's what writers do. Um, and uh, I, I, Lee is a latecomer to the group, but I wanted him in the group because he smokes, and I smoke, and we have to get up and get out of get out of the restaurant and have a cigarette. <laughs> But speaking of uh, roundtables and bitching, the uh, great Dorothy Parker once advised, and here I am going to give some advice, this is Dorothy Parker's advice. If you have any young friends who, I lost my page. Okay, if you have any young friends who aspire to become writers, the second greatest favor you can do them is to present them with copies of the elements of style. The first greatest favor, of course, is to shoot them now while they are still alive. And we all, we all know that feeling. But having said all that, I am very grateful for my success and wouldn't trade writing for any other job. And I am honored to be here tonight among fellow writers and friends and all those who make up our thriving and slightly crazy community. My first hardcover novel was By the Rivers of Babylon, a thriller, uh, published in July 1978 uh, by Hunter Gracie Ivanovich. Um, it came out the same week as Ken Follett's debut novel, Eye of the Needle. Uh, Mr. Follett, who was the 2010 thriller master, and I were reviewed together uh, in uh, the New York Times by Christopher Lehman Hopp, who was not here tonight, I hope. Uh, and Mr. Lehman Hoff wasn't overly thrilled with uh, either thriller. Well, here it is, uh, 37 years later, and both these books are still in print, and both writers haven't done too badly for themselves. So, I feel tonight that I've come full circle. Having begun my career with a thrower and being honored tonight for life's work by my peers, which is the best review of all. Many thanks for this. I'll see you next year. Thank you. First, I have to tell you to please join us next year. July 5th through the 9th, 2016, when we will welcome our 2016 Thriller Master, Heather Graham. <laughs> the National Medal would not be an awards banquet without an after party, 
So the party's not over. Join us next door. Tonight it's next door at Ballroom 1. And grab us, grab us, or join us for a glass of bubbly. I haven't got a drink yet. But I'm getting one. Join me over there.